Rev up your engines! Robbie N says, just saw a Honda 2000S convertible for sale in Germany. I'm in the military. Those were fascinating cars. That was a little four-cylinder, normally aspirated, had no supercharger, no turbocharger, and it almost put out as much horsepower as a Porsche. They are really well-built cars. They don't make them anymore, but people like them. At one point in time in the future, I'm assuming they're going to become serious collector's items because they were very interesting cars. If you can get one and it's still in good shape, I would definitely buy it. Even I, I'm a Toyota guy, but if I got a good deal on one, I'd like to have one of those little sports cars. They're fun to drive around. They got a lot of horsepower, and they got Honda reliability, too. Spicy RN says, Scotty, what are your thoughts on buying a 97 Thunderbird as a first car, and I'm planning on supercharging it. As a first car, and it's going to be your only car for driving? I wouldn't buy that. That's a weekend play around toy car. It's so old, you know, it's it's 23 years old and if you're going to supercharge it, then you'd have to rebuild the engine because it would blow the engine. That old it would be worn and that would blow the engine. You'd put so much money in that thing and realize in the truth of the way the world is, a 97 Thunderbird isn't worth anything. It's never going to be a collector's item. It's never going to be worth a lot of money. And unless you want to put a lot of money into it and you really like the car, that's your choice. But don't get it as an everyday driver. That wouldn't be a smart move. The says, what do you think about a Toyota Cressida? Well, I used to have one for my wife. It was a great vehicle. Problem is now they're old as the hills. And you get any car that's 20 to 40 years old, you can have problems with it. I got got rid of hers when it was 22 years old because the paint was flaking off of it and the air conditioning system was starting to leak, the head gasket was starting to blow, and it just wasn't worth putting all the time and energy into it because with the paint all flaking, to get a good paint job to make it look good, that was going to cost me at least three grand, and it wasn't worth putting it in. Then I got that fantastic uh, 2002 ES Lexus 300 for my wife for three grand. That was the whole car and only had 60,000 miles, and the Crest had 150,000 miles, so eh, I just traded and got something better. <laughs> That's generally what you do. Really, really, really old cars, unless you're a restorer, they're, they're not something the average person should have. Dylan Molly says, what are your thoughts on the new Toyota Supra? Well, it's not a Toyota. It's a BMW Roadster. They're made by BMW in a BMW factory. People are jealous. Oh, Toyota, we went to Super Big. So what do they do? They bring a BMW Roadster and call it. They might be interesting cars, and they're spending a ton of money advertising. A few days ago, you saw there were a bunch of videos on it well whether they're good or not they're not really Toyotas it's just a marketing nonsense as far as I'm concerned stuff stuff says Mr. Kilmer how do you take the transmission out with no jack well you'd have to be really strong then <laughs> You got to jack a car up in the air first. So you got to have a jack, right? So jack it up in the air and then put jack stands there. Then you still got the jack. And you try to put that jack under the transmission and wobble it out as you take it off. It might fall off. I did that years ago and flattened one of my fingers doing it. You want to do that kind of work? Get yourself a transmission jack. Places like Harbor Freight Tools, they sell the scissor jack transmission jack on wheels. And they're less than $100. I've got one, and they work decent. Don't think you're going to be strong enough to pull it on and off. Those scissors ones are fine if you're working on the ground. Guys that have a big lift, they got to have a big jack for the transmission because it's way up in the air. But if you're working on the ground, you just jack the car up. Those little scissors transmission jacks work perfectly fine. I've got one. I've used it for years. I think it's about 35 years old. David, David Mikulik. Which is better, Honda or Toyota CVT transmission? Very good questions. Realize that both of those companies design and make their own CVTs. Honda's always made their transmissions and Toyota makes theirs. From what I've seen so far, I'd have to say that the Toyotas are a little bit better than the Hondas, but Honda seems to be catching up. Everybody's going to CVTs because of gas mileage and increased efficiency. In the future, you may not get a choice. They might all come with that. Honda and Toyota seem to realize that and they seem to be perfecting them. So I'd say Toyota's a little bit better, but they're kind of neck and neck now. Stay away from the Jatco CVTs, though. They're garbage. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.